Let's solve this differential equation. Let's look at this as dy over dx. This is equal to x times y squared. The strategy is put all the y and dy together on one side, and then put all the x and dx on the other side, and then we can integrate both sides. This is how we are going to do it. We're looking at this as the differential y divided by the differential x. So I get to multiply both sides by dx, so that the dx, dx cancel. Here's just a detail, OK? So we have dy is equal to x, y squared, dx. On the right-hand side, this is the x world. The y is not invited. But then we can divide both sides by y squared. So now they found you know, the right places to go. So right here, we can look at this as um, y to the negative 2. And then we have the dy. And this is equal to x, dx. Okay, And then you don't need to show these steps all the time because this is pretty easy to, sh to see that you put the dx onto the right-hand side, you divide the x squared onto the left-hand left side. So you can just go from here to here. But the important thing is, once again, all the y and dy together on one side, x and dx on the other side. So then we can integrate both sides. And then here comes the detail. Be careful. Here we have originally 1 over y squared, but I look at it as y to the negative 2, so I get to use the reverse power rule. Plus 1, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and then I divide it by negative 1. So on the left-hand side, I have 1 over negative 1, which is negative, and we have y to the negative 1, and that's 1 over y. So that's just integration, no big deal. But then technically, whenever we integrate, we add a constant. So we'll do that. So I have plus a c right here. Okay. However, on the right-hand side, we still have to integrate as well. The integral of x is just 1 half x squared. But then, as I mentioned, whenever we integrate, we should add a constant. So plus a c right here. But a small trouble is they are not supposed to be the same as c. Right? They may not be. So technically, I will have to label this as a c1, so like a particular constant for the left-hand side. I'll label this as c2 a particular constant for the right-hand side, okay? But then the problem is that if you subtract c1 on both sides, they cancel, of course. And then I can get this is negative 1 over y is equal to 1 over 2x squared. But then c2 is a constant minus c1, which is not a constant. The result is another constant. I might as well just write it as plus c3. So this is equal to c3 is equal to c2 minus c1, which is just a constant. And then later on, you can skip this step as well, meaning if you need to integrate both sides, all we need to do is put a constant on the right-hand side only, because this will always happen, OK? But then for, for the first question that we're doing this, uh, let me just show you all the detail. OK, I have negative 1 over y is equal to this expression. Our goal is to isolate the y whenever we can, and we can totally do that, so let's do that. Well, to isolate y, perhaps we can multiply everything by negative, right? Let's multiply by a negative 1 throughout this expression. So I get positive 1 over y on the left-hand side. This is equal to negative 1 times this, which is negative 1 over 2, x squared. And then we have negative 1 times c3, and that's like minus c3 right here. But then another problem comes. If you have a constant, which is c3, and you multiply by with a negative uh, number, this is totally fine. But we just don't like to have negative constants. If you would like, I am going to write this as 1 over y. This is equal to negative 1 half x squared. But now we'll purpose write this as plus uh, c4, another constant. But I'm just looking at this as a positive value. So plus c4. OK? Well, this is 1 over y is equal to this. So what do we do to isolate y? I technically will have to raise both sides to the negative 1 power. So I can flip that, right? So on the left-hand side, we get y. Finally, it's by itself. And then I'll pretty much put this as 1 over. This becomes 1 over this thing. And let me write the c4 first. c4, 
and then minus one half x squared. And we are pretty much done. But then this is a complex fraction because we have a big fraction, but then here is a small fraction. So let's multiply the top and bottom by two. And you see why it's going to be two on the top over two times c4. Okay, let me just put it as two times c4 as, as for now. Two times one half is one, but it's minus x squared. That's all we have. And we are done. But then two times c4, two is a constant, c4 is also a constant. We can also just write it as a constant. You can use c5, but then we are uh, at the end of the question. So we are just going to call this the final constant on the top of two over this right here. The book use k, so we just use k for the constant, and minus x squared. This right here is the general solution. For the differential equation. Okay, so k is a constant. Of course, if you use capital C, that's fine as well. However, if you look at that differential equation, let me just do it right here. We have dy dx is equal to x y squared. Notice that there's a solution that's not in this general solution family. And the solution is something rather tricky. You have to just look at this differential equation and think about it. Notice that when y is exactly equal to zero, okay, if you look at this, not just a number, but rather like a horizontal line, like a curve, okay, like a function. This right here is also a solution. Why? Because when y is equal to zero, of course, uh, if y is equal to zero, of course, y prime, the derivative of that would be zero. And you see that I plug in zero on the right hand side, I get zero, derivative is equal to zero, which agrees. So technically, I would also have to include this as part of the answer. And sometimes to emphasize this right here, it's a solution in terms of it's a function, it's a zero um, function, they use three lines, meaning, uh, meaning y of x, this is equal to zero for all x values. Okay, so this is a solution and that's also a solution.